gon' step up for me Make sure my fans stay cause my daughter got it Hello everyone and thank you and welcome back to my YouTube channel. That channel is Deb Snell's 48th World. If you missed it in my introduction, I want to thank you all for your continued support and I continue to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Okay, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Let's blow up, let's grow up together. Okay, on this social media platform. We're going to be going in tonight talking about uh, Andy Cohen's show, Watch What Happens Live. He definitely has... Um, Two good guests. I could say one of them is phenomenal, of course, because we've known her uh, and we watched her grow throughout the seasons of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Okay, and we're speaking of Kenya Moore, the lovely Kenya Moore, the fabulous, the twirl, team twirl all day long, Kenya Moore from The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Then we have this other gentleman I'm not very familiar about, just met him today on the show. Okay, but his name is Joel Kim Booster. He is a comedian out there in the comedian world, a comedy world. Um, too much, not too much for him on this show of a review because, like I said, I really don't know him that well. So we're not really going to just go in there and make like I know him. Okay, but we have a few highlights for him. We know he's an ass kisser uh, for Kenya Moore. That's point bank and period. You pretty, have, pretty much have to go watch the show and then you can see why I came to that conclusion. He totally pays homage to Miss Kenya Moore on all fronts, from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet. Okay, and everything in between. He totally is obsessed with Kenya Moore. Okay, or a fan favorite. Um, he thinks um, after watching the show and probably just watching Eva, uh, whole career, how she took off with uh, the next top model and She's been on uh, several TV shows, and of course, she's a household name with um, Housewives of Atlanta. But mostly, she get her uh, claim to fame through to uh, Next Top Model and that Tyra Banks show she had over there when she was uh, being groomed, okay? But um, basically, he said Evil is pretty much too much work for him to be around, friendship, uh, co-worker, she's just too much for him. Then they had a poll where you were uh, asked to vote on who you felt was the best Barbie representation when they did a uh, little Brooklyn, Brooklyn's uh, coming out party. And everybody selected Portia as the holiday Barbie. They thought she was just too cute. Her baby was too cute. She won that event. Okay, then um, he goes on to say he felt Cynthia Bailey uh, won in his eyes because she was the thirst bucket of I guess it would be called the season 12 thirst bucket because she came up dressed like a uh, wedding uh, doll for Barbie uh, with the intent to marry. So it I had to talk about that on The Real Housewives of Atlanta because she was just too desperate and she just looked at just uh, a woman, female desperado. OK, that's all I'm going to say about her. He felt the same way. Um then it was a situation where he was telling Kenya as well as Andy that he didn't like to see her and Portia fight. That just tears him up every time they get into a little spat. But he's glad they've grown. The babies definitely had a great side effect for them to bond and become, you know, sisterhood, uh, women empowering both each other and all that stuff. So um, that was good to know. And Kenya appreciated it as well. Then Andy wanted him to make a tagline if he was like an honorary housewife. What would his tagline be? And it was something about some trees and him being the tallest one in a tree or the forest or something. I kind of got it uh, mixed up, whatnot, because it was just too cute with how he said it. But I forgot it just right after he said it because I really wasn't interested in him. I was there for Kenya more to see what she can give me to talk about. Okay. So that was pretty much uh, he he's on some kind of show. Uh, it's like a sitcom slash com comedian type work uh, of a show, and it surrounds around a family, I believe. So, yeah, I want to just Google him, check him out. He has his, um, well, he co-stars on his own TV sitcom. Don't ask me the title because, I, I, like I said, I wasn't paying too much attention to him. But now we go to uh, Miss Kenya Moore. Yes, Miss Kenya Moore's back. She's twirling. She's doing her darn thing. Uh, she talked about celebrating her daughter's Brooklyn's uh, one-year-old party 
for a one-year-old birthday. She had a birthday party for him. Mark, Mark, uh, Mark was invited. They cordially uh, entertained one another by them being in the same room. Uh, she tried to give some inference or reference that um, they weren't on the best sense of uh, communicating levels uh, for the positive, but they bared each other's uh, space or uh, their essence of each other being around one another just to celebrate their one-year-old daughter's birthday. Okay, I just found that was very, very weird and disturbing, but it just is what it is. Uh, that was her story. She's sticking to it, okay? Uh, then King was very open about Mark not wanting to work on their current relationship. And I'm like, damn, King, if you all that and you know all that and you feel that way, go on and get a divorce and call it a day. You know what I'm saying? You all, both of y'all said in press, uh, in the press that you all wanted to co-parent, that y'all both were going y'all separate ways, this, that, and the third. But then you're trying to play like it's a catch-22 here. You want him, but then you don't want him. You know what he's feeling still about you. You don't want to address that issue. It's just like, can you you're doing the most and, and, and you're draining my energy uh, for me talking about it. So that's pretty much where we left out there. Uh, there was a caller who called in and she was asking, because I guess she was just as confused as the rest of us, you know, was she dating? <laughs> I'm like, first of all, if she, if you're going along and playing with her uh, with, her being married, how can she date when she already done told you they're separated? She's in a relationship in her mind. I don't know if it's on paper, whether she married or whatever, but she's saying, no, she's not dating anyone because she's still married, which makes absolutely good sense. But me and that call on the same wavelength, we all know that, can you know, you're not married? Uh, no, really, you know, uh, on paper, so it's it'd be kind of weird for you to try to get a divorce because what are you getting a divorce on? It's something that never happened, only in your mind, only in a contractual agreement between you and your actor slash husband slash father for your baby, uh, Mark Daly, okay? So, ain't nobody really buying. I wish you just come out the high horse, just say, hey, it is what it is. We're divorced. It didn't need to be nobody's, uh, they, it didn't need to be a public, um, we call it announcement. We didn't really announce it till we got married. After we got married, y'all learned in and y'all know after I get divorced, okay? And just handle it that way and just move on. Because too many stories are still coming out. People want answers. You ain't trying to give them nothing. And you definitely was kind of tight lipped and watching everything. Uh the questions Andy was uh giving you to respond to. You were <laughs> I can't say you was a nice tight little person. You only gave what you needed to give. Sometimes it looked like you wanted to give a little more, but you know that will open up the door for more questions. So moving from that situation, uh, they covered Kenya being seen as a single mom. Of course, that was the first scene of her little episode they were previewing. Uh, and she was showing, you know, that she's doing all this stuff for herself. I felt really no too much sympathy for her because black women been doing that for a lifetime okay and other women out of my race have been doing it as well it just is what it is you get thrown lemons you make lemonade or half strawberry half lemonade whatever but you can definitely raise brooklyn by yourself you have the uh ingenuity you have the perseverance you have the financial backing uh, of you being an entrepreneur, you know how to make your money, you know how to save your money, you know how to produce money. So just because this relationship didn't work out for whatever features, you know, don't make it seem like, oh, woe is me, woe is me, because no, nobody's really going to hold your hand through this situation and say, oh, well, you know, it is this, that, and now they're going to tell you, put on your big girl panties, you grieve, you move on, and you go forth and be great. So, uh, yeah, that was it for that one. Um, then another, uh, can you admit she hasn't filed for divorce when the caller was asking her, you know, is she dating anybody? She made it very plain. She, you know, she hadn't filed yet. Uh, Kenya Mark don't have a prenup. She told us that as well. No prenup agreement uh, was made and signed on. Kenya says her home is her only asset that she owns outright you know that's her bread and butter that's her baby or other baby other than brooklyn and the dogs and I, you know she can put her money up for ventures uh because she owned that it's almost like having a gold a piece of gold bar that you can bargain off of and you can you know definitely uh 
borrow from it as well if you need additional money. So we know her house is very nice. We know it costs a pretty penny. And I'm uh, very proud to say I'm, I'm, I'm proud of her to have that forethought to become a homeowner and paid your house off. And then you make a hand over fist if you wanted to sell it for whatever reason. But we know you love your house. You're standing in your house. That's you and Brooklyn's uh, residence for now. Moving on from that, uh, they showed us clips about uh cynthia being a thirst bucket and kenya uh, you know she was pretty much tearing down cynthia's walls like you know you're doing too much you making your bed but that's like the pot calling the kettle black because she did the shit with walter she did the shit with matt she was telling them she wanted to get married that's all came out her mouth and then she's trying to throw it in cynthia's face that you shouldn't do that and instead of her saying why she pretty much was just throwing arrows at uh cynthia's back and in her heart you know, saying, girl, sit down somewhere. He ain't asked you to marry him. You don't, you know, he don't know if you're going to get married to him. Stop it with all the foolishness on social media. But like I said, ain't that the call, the pot calling the cuddle black? Okay, come on, Ken. Uh, moving on from there, um, Michael Rappaport calls in or he texts in um, to give his little thoughts of the show and Kenya being uh, featured on the show today. And it was trying to tell her about it. She's like, I don't, I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to hear nothing that man got to say. So they moved on quickly from that. Because, you know, she has total disdain for the man as well as he had for her. But it's all about being cordial when you're in public. But I think they both rather go their separate ways than be in the same room with one another. Then we got Candy. She takes us in and she tries to make the audience as well as Kenya know that she had no forethought, no forewarning that sincerely what was going to come and drop the bombshell she did drop. Even though it was uh, giving new light and positivity, positiveness towards Portia's plight. But later on, we find out Portia said, hell, it wasn't Cynthia Ward, but it was some woman. I may not mention her name to give her any validity, but yeah, he did cheat on me. It just wasn't with that hoe. <laughs> Okay, I like go ahead, Portia girl, go ahead, girl. So, um, and then, uh, you know, um, uh, Andy was trying to say, Well, you know, I believe Candy and this, that, and third. She said, Yeah, I believe Candy, even though she looked like she wanted to say some shade about the whole thing, but basically, she did. And she just went on and said, No, Candy's an honest person, I believe Candy. She said she didn't know, she didn't know, and she left it at that. Um, then you have a scene where Andy shows the whole incident about um Mike Hill asking uh, a post preview, I guess you would say, a, a post review where Cynthia and Mike was in her bed. They were talking about, you know, uh life itself. Then Cynthia got on this whole binging thing about getting married. She wanted uh, a emerald cut type uh, engagement ring. She, she, you know, she wanted to become his heel. She wanted to look for a dress. This and third, and it kind of blew Mike away. He was looking at her like, "Girl, you can't tell me what to do. I'm gonna do what I want to do." And and you know, pretty much, I'm like, "Oh my goodness!" And he's saying, "Well, you know, whatever we do, we're gonna have to come to a consensus because my businesses and stuff is in New York. Uh, it's, I mean, L.A. It's it's not here." <laughs> It's definitely not here in Atlanta. So if you want all this you say you want with me, you're going to have to change uh, area codes, zip codes, okay? And she's like, you know, I want to be with you wherever I can be with you. Just stand in the third. Because uh, she was just doing too much. I can't talk about her. But uh, it shows that um, Mike can write any ticket and, and, and any price out of her checkbook and she'll give it to him. Okay, moving on from there. Um, can you... Uh, didn't like in the scene of this first episode coming back to season 12 somehow a man was holding brooklyn and she quickly found that out uh when she was looking around and whatever not entertaining her guests she ran right over there took that uh baby out of his hands and gave it to another woman to hold while she still try to be nice and cordial with her guests and seeing if everything's going well with them which i thought i'm like why would she do that you know men can hold babies you know what's going on can you need to tell us something that's happened in the past with you or maybe somebody you know that you can't have men holding on to your little girl, you know. He wasn't doing anything inappropriate, not when they were showing us. I mean, but she had a whole fit about it. She was saying Mark would have a fit and then she on the show watch what, what happened live. She was saying, well, no, I kind of over-exaggerated, but um, Mark had nothing to do with my decision to remove my baby from that man's arms. Uh, that was totally me, this, that, and the third. And I just didn't want him to hold my baby. And so 
you know, everybody could say what they want to say or whatever or speculate, but the whole deal was she didn't want to handle, handle her baby, so she took it from him. That was it. Um, then we got her throwing major shade at Cynthia, but we pretty much covered that. She thought Cynthia was being a, a true thirst bucket or thought when it came to uh, Mike Hill. Um, then uh, I think Carla had asked, you know, would her and Nene ever get back together to a, you know, a common ground, a core to ground? She's saying absolutely not. When somebody tries to spit on you, you have no uh, more relations with them, period. And I can understand that part. You know, nothing should get to the point where somebody want to put their hands on you or even put their bodily fluids on you. All right. That, that's not good. Not good at all. So I concur with her on that part. Uh, but she didn't have to go so far as say Nene is dead to her. That's really harsh and really strong. OK, but that's just how her and Nene gets down. Um, let me see. Stressful. Uh, Andy was asking her about the stressfulness that the show caused uh, prior to her you know, getting married or wanting to come back to Real Housewives of Atlanta. And, you know, Andy was trying to uh, make inference or reference to uh, uh, Mark not really wanting to be a part of the show. And she was like, no, that's not really true. They were having issues before even thinking about uh, coming on the show, you know, as a season uh, regular or before they even got married, they were having some issues. And I'm like, can you pump your brakes, baby? Because you're telling so many different stories. I am, I'm getting lost in the sauce myself. I mean, damn, were you, you said he was the man of your dreams, man of your life. What were you coping with that you felt you could put up with, even after marrying him? I mean, pump your brakes, women. If you're seeing signs right off the bat that this man is not going to be really who you think you uh, want in your life and who you you know, plan to have in your life, then just, don't even go no further with the relationship. Just go back to friend status and y'all take it a lot slower than what you're going. But she was like, she recognized these negative signs, but she thought she could change them, make them do her thing. And then, you know, whatever a relationship or a marriage or however you want to see it, y'all got together and still blew up in your face. So she was saying to trying to tell Andy, basically, no, uh, we had problems prior to all of this, me bringing him in the mix at all. So uh, Andy was like, okay, well, he didn't have to believe the shit either. Nobody really believed it. But if Ken, you want to continue on this path, let her continue because she's going to come out and she ain't going to be able to uh, stop the repercussions uh, after they flow. Uh, then a uh, caller, I think Andy asked, when was the last time you saw Phaedra? Uh, Paul, she said, the last time I saw Nene Hairline. <laughs> Like, oh, girl, the shade is major with you tonight. The shade is major with you tonight. That was funny as crap. I laughed, I laughed, I laughed. But that's all I had on Watch What Happens Live. A uh, little preview review for you all. Hope y'all enjoyed it. That was a bonus. Now I got to work on Merit to Medicine as well as The Real Housewives of Atlanta for you great people. Okay, but other than that, y'all be blessed and I'll talk to you in another video. Bye-bye. I know I ain't perfect, but